when as the sheriff of Nottingham was come with mickle grief, he talked no good of Robin Hood, that strong and sturdy thief. So unto London Road he passed, his losses to unfold, to King Richard, who did regard the tale that he had told. Why, quoth the king, what shall I do? Art thou not sheriff for me? The law is in force to take thy course of them that injure thee. Go get thee gone, and by thyself devise some tricking game, for to enthrall yon rebels all. Go take thy course with them. So away the sheriff he returned, and by the way he thought of the words of the king, and how the thing to pass might well be brought. For within his mind he imagined that when such matches were, those outlaws stout without all doubt would be the bowmen there. So an arrow with a golden head and shaft of silver white, who on the day should bear away for his own proper right, tidings came to bold Robin Hood under the greenwood tree. Come prepare you then, my merry men, we'll go yon sport to see. With that stepped forth a brave young man, David of Doncaster. Master, said he, be ruled by me, from the greenwood we'll not stir. But to tell the truth, I'm well informed, yon match it is a while. The sheriff, I bet, devised this, us archers to beguile. Thou smells of coward, said Robin Hood, thy words do not please me. Come on what will, I'll try my skill at yon brave archery. I then bespoke, brave little John, come let us thither gang. Come listen to me, how it shall be, that we need not be kenned. Our mantles all of Lincoln green behind us we will leave. We'll dress us all so several, it shall not be perceived. One shall wear white, another red, one yellow, another blue. Thus in disguise to the exercise will gang whatever ensue. Forth from the greenwood they are gone, with hearts all firm and stout, resolving then with the sheriff's men to have a hearty bout. So themselves they mixed with the rest, to prevent all suspicion. For if they should together hold, they thought it no discretion. So the sheriff looked round about amongst eight hundred men, but could not see the sight that he had long suspected then. Some said if Robin Hood was here and all his men to boot, sure none of them could pass these men, so bravely they do shoot. Aye, quoth the sheriff, and scratched his head, and thought he would have been here. I thought he would, but though he's bold, he durst not now appear. All that word grieved Robin Hood to the heart, he vexed in his blood. Ere long, thought he, thou shalt well see that here was Robin Hood. Some cried blue jacket, another cried brown, and a third one cried brave yellow. But the fourth man said, yon man in red in this place has no fellow. But that was Robin Hood himself, for he was clothed in red. At every shot the prize he got, he was both sure and dead. So the arrow with the golden head and shaft of silver white, brave Robin Hood won and bore with him for his own proper right. These outlaws there that very day to shun all kinds of doubt, by three or four, no less nor more, as they went in, came out, until they all assembled were, under the greenwood shade, where they report in pleasant sport what brave pastime they made. Says Robin Hood, all my care is, how that yon sheriff may know certainly that it was I that bore his arrow away. Says little John, my counsel good did take effect before, so therefore now, if you'll allow, I will advise once more. This I advise, said little John, that a letter shall be penned, and when it is done, to Nottingham, yon to the sheriff shall send. That is well advised, said Robin Hood, but how must it be sent? Or when you please, tis done with ease, master, be you content. I'll stick it on my arrow's head and shoot it into the town. The mark must show where it must go, whenever it lights down. The project it was well performed, the sheriff that letter had, which when he read he scratched his head and raved like one that's mad. So we'll leave him chafing in his grief, which will do him no good. Now, my friends, attend and hear the end of honest Robin Hood. <laughs>